Welcome back to our weekly walk through the garden. My name is Shalina Durkot, horticulturist and garden coordinator for UT Gardens Crossville. So far we have showcased our daylily plot and butterfly garden. Today we're going to talk to you a little bit about the herb garden. Hi, I'm Robin Piacini. I'm a Cumberland County Master Gardener and I'm at the UT Crossville Gardens and I'm so happy to be here and to share with you some information about our beautiful herb garden today. Let's start here with the culinary part of this garden. And as a matter of fact, this garden is divided into four sections, beginning with the culinary, and then we have the um, sensory, and we have um, the medicinal, and the tea garden. So hopefully you'll learn something new today. So with the culinary garden, what we have here are several varieties of herbs. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, the basils. We have uh, purple and, and sweet basil here. And these are used a lot uh, with Italian dishes. And what's really nice about them is they're very pungent. They have a lot of flavor and sometimes the purple uh, basil is used with oil uh, to dip bread into and that is when it's fresh like that it is so delicious so you really need to try that. The other thing is um, we have uh, different types of thyme here and with thyme you might want to try something a little different if you have uh, success with growing that. I have a uh, carpet type of purple uh, thyme and it is beautiful because it kind of layers over in my landscaping. I decided to put the thyme in, different types of thyme, in my landscaping. And so it kind of layers over the rocks. And as you walk by, you can smell this wonderful, wonderful aroma. But you can also use it. You can use it in your cooking. And I actually take a mix of my culinary herbs, dry them, and then store them, and then use them for a general purpose. So that is one thing that a lot of people may not think about with these culinary herbs that you can use them in other ways. Let's move on to the sensory part of the garden. And as you can see, lavender is also attracts butterflies and bees and flies of all different types. It is an absolutely wonderful herb. So much you can do with it. And let's talk about the lamb's ear. The lamb's ear is a very uh, unusual type of herb in that the texture is so soft. The leaves are so soft. They remind me of kitten fur, actually. But they're called lamb's ear for a reason. And the bees absolutely love it. And we sometimes just think of the sensory herbs as just something we smell. But in this case, this is a great example of a texture. So let's go to the tea garden. Okay, so this is what we call wild bergamot. And this is used a lot to make tea. And you've probably seen it in the stores uh, sold separately. And um, it is, it's very delicious. You should try some of this if you get a chance to grow it. It's very, very good. And also the chamomile tea over here, the chamomile plant, um, this is wonderful. If you have a need to relax at night before you go to bed, it is recommended that you make a tea uh, from the flowers and uh, it just has this nice calming effect. So you might want to try that. So here we are looking at the blue balsam peppermint plant used in tea. And I just want to tell you a real quick story here. Um, uh, a long time ago uh, I had learned that you can actually take some of these sprigs, put them in a large jar of water with some tea bags, and set it in the sun. So you might have heard of something called sun tea. And you just let it sit there until the tea is well steeped and let it cool off and you've got yourself some really very <laughs> pure mint sun tea 
and it's wonderful to have something out of your garden that you're drinking like that, that, that you took a little bit of time uh, to make, and uh, therefore it's really special. And here we are at the medicinal section of the herb garden. And it's very lovely to begin with. We've got echinacea here just blooming so beautifully today, along with the St. John's wort. And these two particular herbs have been known to uh, have healing qual uh, qualities to them. And also, uh, not just uh, for wounds, but also uh, just for health reasons, to keep you healthy. It goes clear back to the times of uh, the medieval wars, where they actually used some of these uh, medicinal herbs for the wounds. So while you're here at the herb garden, oh, you got to do this. You got to check this out. This is a, a human sundial here, and it has the instructions on how to use it. And uh, it, it asks this question: uh, Sun sundials are the oldest form of telling time. Did you know that? Very dependable. To use the sundial, we need three things. Sun, time markers, and a gnomon. What's a gnomon? A shadow maker. So you are the gnomon, part of the sundial. So facing north, at the end of the paved path, stretch your right arm straight out in front of you, casting a shadow on the down numbers, thus indicating the approximate time. So I'm going to go do that right now. So the human sundial, I'm here at the very end of the walkway, stretching my arm out, waiting for the sun to shine, <laughs> and uh, the shadow would definitely tell me just what time it is. Be sure to look next week for another area that we will feature in the garden. We are open seven days a week during daylight hours, so I invite you to come for a visit. Uh, and there's also a golf cart available Monday through Friday. If you come between 9 and 4, I would be happy to grab that for you as well. Have a wonderful day.